Cloak and Dagger is a great addition to the Marvel Universe shows, and with Season 2 finally out, I thought some people might need a quick recap of Season 1, especially people that are still on the fence about the show. It's amazing. Watch it. Season 1 goes over the origins of Tandy Bowen and Tyrone Johnson, but for the purpose of the show, it's not as dark as the comics, and both of them are younger. When they were kids, Tandy and Tyrone get exposed to a mysterious energy thanks to the Roxxon Corporation. A platform explodes, and when it unleashes the energy underwater, the two of them were both, coincidentally, underwater. The explosion inadvertently causes the death of Tyrone's brother, Billy. A cop gets scared, and he shoots Billy in the chest. Billy falls into the water, Tyrone dives in after him. Tandy, on the other hand, is in the car with her father. When the explosion goes off, the father loses control of the car, there's an oil tanker, they both go into the water. Billy and Tandy's father both die, but Tandy and Tyrone survive. When the energy hits them, somehow, usually adrenaline, their powers kick in and they end up helping save each other. Years go by and they don't manifest their powers, but as they get older, both of their lives go completely downward. Tyrone blames himself for the death of his brother and lives in constant anger, while Tandy, who is now going out being completely wild and committing crimes, engages in activities so that she can dull her senses and not think about the loss of her father and the life she now lives with her mother. One of her favorite things to do is to steal from rich kids because, according to her, they have enough already. After another coincidence, Tandy and Tyrone end up at the same party, and when she tries to pick Tyrone's pocket, Tyrone chases after her. Being so close to each other, the both of their powers finally activate, and this is the start of them trying to put their lives back together. The two learn that they can use their powers to try and figure out the truth behind what happened to them and what happened to their family. Tandy, trying to figure out why Roxxon framed her dad as the cause of the explosion, and Tyrone, trying to find the cop that apparently doesn't exist that killed his brother Billy. Surprisingly, Tandy actually infiltrates Roxxon and is able to learn a lot about some secret experiments that they've been doing, and about a man who survived the explosion. She meets Mina Hess, the daughter of Ivan Hess. She learns that Ivan's been in a coma since the explosion happened, and with her brand new powers, she's actually able to enter his mind. With Cloak's help, they use their powers to try and free him from the coma. Luckily, they learn a lot about what's going on and what happened that night. Sadly, Ivan doesn't remember anything when he wakes up. He does, however, give Tandy information that helps her pin stuff on the Roxxon Corporation, which is very lucky. With the new information and her awesome powers, Tandy is able to kidnap the CEO of Roxxon, which should be almost impossible, and get him to admit to all of the things that Roxxon did. Sadly, Tandy finds out some stuff about her father that she's not too happy about, mainly that she doesn't remember him exactly how she thought. Turns out that he was, on occasion, beating his wife. Thrown by this new truth, Tandy takes up the Roxxon CEO on an offer to get a buttload of money in exchange for the incriminating evidence. She takes it, and then she goes back to her old ways. Tyrone, on the other hand, starts looking into the cop that murdered his brother, and with his cool powers of teleportation, which he cannot control, can spy on the cop that apparently doesn't exist. Like I said, Tyrone doesn't have complete control of his powers yet, so it gets him into a tight situation on more than one occasion. During his time spying on Detective Connors, aka Detective Don't Exist, he gets help from a new cop in New Orleans, Detective Bridget O'Reilly. Tyrone and Detective O'Reilly trick Connors into revealing that he killed Billy the night of the Roxxon explosion. But thanks to the higher-ups, Connors avoided going to jail. Knowing that he would eventually be facing jail time, Connors kills O'Reilly's cop boyfriend and frames Tyrone for the murder, forcing Tyrone to go on the run. With both Tandy and Tyrone struggling to keep their lives together after everything they've learned, they lean on each other to stay strong. Which is great, because while Tyrone and Tandy were trying to piece their lives together and find all these truths, the Roxxon Corporation's experiments were causing problems all throughout New Orleans. The energy that Roxxon has been experimenting with and digging into becomes too volatile for Roxxon to control, and unless something's done, the energy will wash over New Orleans and turn everyone into these weird light force, dark force, zombie murderers. After fighting their way through countless zombies, and, by the way, Tyrone finally gets revenge on the cop that killed his brother, in a very weird way, Tandy and Tyrone combine their powers and release all of the energy that's building up inside of Roxxon into the air, where it surprisingly doesn't harm anyone, not even the birds. Having saved the city, Tyrone and Tandy become the unofficial heroes of New Orleans. Yay for them. Unfortunately, 
One thing that isn't resolved is the fact that Tyrone is still wanted by the police, so he has to stay at Tandy's abandoned church. But half good news is that Tandy actually reconciles with her mother, and they start getting along now that they know the truth about the father. Unknown to the two of them, Detective O'Reilly was having her own little adventure, and O'Reilly was exposed to the Light Force Dark Force energy. Unlike the others who were infected, O'Reilly actually gets powers of her own, and she becomes a character from the comic books, Mayhem. She's not a bad guy, but she's not a good guy. And Tyrone and Tandy are gonna have a fun time dealing with that and the after effects of releasing energy into the sky. Also, I'm pretty sure Roxxon's not done with them. Let me know if you guys were pumped about the season two premiere and if you wanna see more Cloak and Dagger going forward. And if you also wanna see a comic book versus season one video, because there are a lot of things that are done differently, including the fact that they never met up with the Runaways. Put all your comments down in the comment section, obviously, down below. You guys know how YouTube works. I will see you guys in the next video. You're awesome. I love you guys. And I, I already said I'll see you in the next video, okay? I'm not good at goodbyes. I'm just, I'm just gonna go.